A black boy named Amir finds a lost wallet on the street and returns it to its owner, a white millionaire named Mr. Harlan. The next day, he is shocked when FBI agents show up at his door. What could be the reason behind this unexpected visit? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Amir trudged home from school, his backpack heavy on his small shoulders. The autumn wind rustled the colorful leaves on the sidewalk, and he pulled his worn shirt around him. As he walked, his mind wandered to the troubles waiting for him at home. Suddenly, something caught his eye. A brown leather wallet lay on the ground, partially hidden by fallen leaves. Amir's heart raced as he bent down to pick it up. It was thick and heavy in his hand. With trembling fingers, he opened the wallet. His eyes widened at the sight of crisp bills neatly tucked inside. There was more money than he had ever seen in his life. A driver's license peeked out from one of the pockets showing the face of an older man with kind eyes and gray hair. The name read, Mr. Harold Harlan. Amir's stomach growled, reminding him of the empty cupboards at home. He thought of Oliver, his older brother, and how stressed he had been lately. This money could solve so many of their problems. But a small voice in his heart whispered that it wasn't right. Amir closed his eyes and said a quick prayer, asking for guidance. When he opened them, he knew what he had to do. With a deep breath, Amir carefully put the wallet in his backpack. He would find Mr. Harlan and return it. It was the right thing to do, even if it meant going hungry for a little longer. As he continued his walk home, Amir felt a mix of emotions. Part of him worried about facing the criminals in his house again, but another part felt proud of his decision. He clutched the straps of his backpack tightly, the wallet a comforting weight against his back. God will provide, Amir whispered to himself, his faith giving him strength. He didn't know how, but he believed things would get better. For now, he had a mission, to find Mr. Harlan and return what belonged to him. Amir stood at the gates of the biggest house he had ever seen. His heart pounded as he pressed the intercom button. A crackly voice answered, and Amir explained why he was there. The gates opened with a soft hum. As he walked up the long driveway, Amir's eyes widened at the beautiful garden. Colorful flowers bloomed everywhere, and a fountain bubbled cheerfully in the center. The mansion loomed ahead, its windows gleaming in the afternoon sun. Before Amir could knock, the massive front door swung open. There stood Mr. Harlan, his gray hair neatly combed and his kind eyes twinkling. He looked just like his picture, only taller. Hello there, young man, Mr. Harlan said warmly. You must be Amir. Amir nodded, suddenly shy. He reached into his backpack and pulled out the wallet. I found this, sir. I wanted to return it to you. Mr. Harlan's eyebrows shot up in surprise. He took the wallet, checked its contents, and then looked at Amir with wonder. My goodness, he said softly. What an honest young man you are. Amir felt his cheeks grow warm at the praise. Mr. Harlan smiled broadly and said, Please, come inside. I'd love to thank you properly over a cup of tea. Amir hesitated. He thought about Oliver waiting at home about the scary men who might be there. But curiosity tugged at him. He had never been in such a fancy house before. I... I guess I could stay for a little while, Amir said. Mr. Harlan beamed and ushered him inside. Amir's jaw dropped as he entered. The floor was shiny marble, and a huge chandelier hung from the ceiling. Paintings lined the walls, and soft music played from somewhere he couldn't see. This way to the sitting room, Mr. Harlan said, leading Amir through the grand hallway. Amir followed, his eyes darting everywhere trying to take in all the beautiful things around him. He had never imagined a house could look like this. It was like stepping into a fairy tale. Amir sat nervously on the edge of the plush armchair, his small hands wrapped around the warm teacup. The china felt delicate in his grip, and he worried he might break it. He took a small sip, savoring the sweet taste. As they settled into plush armchairs, Mr. Harlan rang a small bell. A kind-faced woman appeared with a tray of tea and cookies. 
Amir's mouth watered at the sight. Tell me about yourself, Amir. I'd love to know more about the young man who showed such integrity today. Do you live nearby? Mr. Harlan leaned forward, his kind eyes fixed on Amir. Amir nodded, swallowing hard. There was something about Mr. Harlan's gentle manner that made him want to open up. I live a few blocks away, sir, with my older brother, Oliver. Just the two of you? Mr. Harlan asked, his brow furrowing slightly. Amir's eyes dropped to his lap. Yes, sir. Our parents, they left a while ago. Mr. Harlan's face softened with sympathy. I'm so sorry to hear that, Amir. That must be very difficult for you and your brother. Amir nodded, feeling a lump form in his throat. He hadn't talked about this with anyone before, but the words tumbled out. It's been hard. Oliver tries his best, but... He trailed off, unsure how to explain. Mr. Harlan waited patiently, not pushing. Taking a deep breath, Amir continued. Some bad people tricked Oliver, my brother. They said they needed a place to stay for a little while, but now they won't leave. His voice quivered. They're dangerous, I think. I'm scared sometimes. Mr. Harlan's face grew serious. That sounds very frightening, Amir. Have you told anyone about this? Amir shook his head. I didn't know who to tell. I just pray every night for a miracle. I ask God to make them go away, to make our home safe again. Tears welled up in Amir's eyes. He blinked hard, trying not to cry in front of Mr. Harlan. But the older man's kind face and gentle words had opened a floodgate of emotions. I'm so worried about Oliver, Amir whispered. He tries to act brave, but I can see he's scared too. I just want things to be okay again. Amir watched as Mr. Harlan's face changed from kindness to concern. The older man leaned forward, his eyes filled with worry. Amir, I'm so sorry you're going through this, Mr. Harlan said softly. Can you tell me more about these people in your home? Amir felt a mix of fear and relief wash over him. He'd never told anyone about this before, but something about Mr. Harlan made him feel safe. With a shaky breath, he began to speak. They're bad people, sir, Amir said, his voice barely above a whisper. I've heard them talking late at night about things they've stolen. Sometimes they have guns. Mr. Harlan's eyes widened. Guns? Amir, that's very serious. How many of these people are there? Three men, Amir replied. They're always there, day and night. They eat our food and make messes. Oliver tries to keep them happy, but they're mean to him. Tears welled up in Amir's eyes as he thought about his brother. Oliver wants them to leave, but he's scared. He told me once that they threatened him if he tried to make them go away. Mr. Harlan nodded slowly, his face grave. And your brother, he can't go to the police? Amir shook his head. Oliver's afraid they'll hurt us if he does. He feels bad for letting them in, but he didn't know they were so dangerous at first. As he spoke, Amir felt a weight lifting from his shoulders. He'd been carrying this secret for so long, and it felt good to finally tell someone who might be able to help. I just want our home to be safe again, Amir said, his voice cracking. I want Oliver to smile like he used to. Mr. Harlan reached out and gently patted Amir's hand. You're very brave for telling me this, Amir. I want you to know that you did the right thing. Amir's voice trembled as he spoke, but he felt a strange sense of comfort in Mr. Harlan's presence. Every night before I go to bed, I pray, he said softly. I ask God to watch over us, to keep us safe from harm. Mr. Harlan listened intently his eyes filled with a mix of concern and admiration. Amir continued, his words coming easier now. I pray for peace in our home, for the bad men to leave and for Oliver to be happy again. Sometimes, when I'm really scared, I ask God to send us an angel to protect us. Amir's eyes shimmered with unshed tears, but there was a strength in his voice that touched Mr. Harlan deeply. The older man felt a surge of emotion moved by the young boy's unwavering faith in the face of such difficult circumstances. That's very brave of you, Amir, Mr. Harlan said gently. Your faith is truly inspiring. Amir nodded, a small smile tugging at his lips. It helps me feel less scared. Even when things seem really bad, I know God is listening. 
I just have to be patient and keep believing. Mr. Harlan leaned back in his chair, his mind racing. He knew he had to do something to help this family, but he didn't want to alarm Amir or make promises he couldn't keep. Instead, he chose his words carefully. Amir, I want you to know that I'm very glad you told me about this, Mr. Harlan said, his voice filled with determination. I think your prayers might be working, because I believe I can help you and your brother. Amir's eyes widened with hope. Really? You can help us? Mr. Harlan nodded, a reassuring smile on his face. I have some experience dealing with situations like this. I can't tell you exactly what I'm going to do just yet, but I promise you that I'm going to do everything in my power to make your home safe again. Amir felt a wave of relief wash over him. For the first time in months, he felt a glimmer of hope that things might actually change for the better. Amir's heart felt lighter than it had in months. He looked up at Mr. Harlan, his eyes brimming with gratitude. Thank you so much, Mr. Harlan, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. I... I don't know what to say. Mr. Harlan smiled warmly, placing a gentle hand on Amir's shoulder. You don't need to say anything, son. Your honesty in returning my wallet and your bravery in sharing your story are more than enough. Amir nodded, feeling a lump form in his throat. He stood up slowly, realizing it was time for him to head home. As much as he wanted to stay in this safe haven, he knew Oliver would be worried about him. I should probably go now, Amir said reluctantly. My brother will be wondering where I am. Mr. Harlan nodded understanding. He walked Amir to the front door, his steps slow and deliberate. As they reached the entryway, Mr. Harlan knelt down to Amir's eye level. Amir, I want you to remember something, he said, his voice firm but kind. Everything is going to be okay. I promise you that help is on the way. You're not alone in this anymore. Amir felt a warmth spread through his chest. For the first time in what felt like forever, he allowed himself to feel hopeful. He looked into Mr. Harlan's eyes and saw sincerity there, along with a determination that made him believe that maybe, just maybe, things could change. Thank you, Amir said again, this time with more strength in his voice. I, I believe you. As Amir stepped out into the fading afternoon light, he felt different. The weight on his shoulders seemed a little lighter, and the world around him looked a bit brighter. He took a deep breath, savoring the feeling of hope that had sparked within him. As Amir stood at the doorway ready to leave, Mr. Harlan reached into his pocket. He pulled out a crisp hundred-dollar bill and held it out to Amir. Please, Amir, Mr. Harlan said gently. I'd like you to have this as a reward for returning my wallet. It's the least I can do. Amir looked at the money, his eyes widening. He'd never seen a hundred-dollar bill up close before. For a moment, he thought about all the things he could buy with it. New shoes, maybe even a warm coat for the coming winter. But then he remembered something his mother used to say. Doing the right thing is its own reward. Taking a deep breath, Amir smiled up at Mr. Harlan and shook his head. Thank you, Mr. Harlan, but I can't take it, he said softly. I didn't return your wallet for a reward. I did it because it was the right thing to do. Mr. Harlan's eyebrows rose in surprise. He looked at Amir with a new level of respect, clearly impressed by the boy's integrity. You know, Amir, Mr. Harlan said, his voice filled with admiration. You're quite an extraordinary young man. Not many people would refuse a reward, especially when they need it. Amir felt his cheeks grow warm at the compliment. My mom always taught me that honesty is more important than money, he explained. I just want to make her proud, even if she's not here anymore. Mr. Harlan nodded, a gentle smile on his face. He tucked the money back into his pocket and placed his hand on Amir's shoulder. Well, young man, I think it's safe to say that wherever your mother is, she would be incredibly proud of you right now. Amir left Mr. Harlan's mansion with a mixture of hope and uncertainty swirling in his chest. As he walked home, he couldn't help but wonder if Mr. Harlan would really be able to help him and Oliver. It seemed too good to be true. Meanwhile, back at the mansion, Mr. Harlan stood at the window, watching Amir's small figure disappear down the street. The boy's story had stirred something deep within him. 
he felt a familiar sense of purpose that he hadn't experienced since retiring from the FBI. Mr. Harlan's mind raced with possibilities. He knew he had to act fast, but he also had to be careful. The last thing he wanted was to put Amir and Oliver in more danger. With a determined sigh, Mr. Harlan picked up his phone. He scrolled through his contacts, stopping at a name he hadn't called in years. Agent Thompson. Hello, Jack. It's Harlan, he said when the call connected. I need a favor. Mr. Harlan spent the next hour making calls to his old FBI contacts. He was careful not to give too many details, but he made it clear that there was a dangerous situation involving two young boys. As he talked, Mr. Harlan's resolve grew stronger. He realized how much he had missed this feeling of making a difference. But more than that, he felt a connection to Amir that he couldn't explain. The boy's bravery and kindness had touched his heart in a way he hadn't expected. After hanging up from his last call, Mr. Harlan sat down heavily in his armchair. He rubbed his temples, feeling the weight of the situation. He knew he had set things in motion, but he couldn't shake the worry gnawing at him. I need to make sure they're safe first, he muttered to himself. I can't let anything happen to those boys. Amir walked home from Mr. Harlan's mansion, his mind swirling with thoughts. He felt a mix of hope and worry, wondering if Mr. Harlan could really help him and Oliver. As he approached his house, he saw the same old beat-up cars parked outside. His heart sank a little. Inside, Amir found Oliver sitting at the kitchen table, looking tired and stressed. The sound of loud voices came from the living room. Amir knew it was the dangerous men who had taken over their home. Hey, little bro, Oliver said, trying to smile. How was your day? Amir hesitated. He wanted to tell Oliver about Mr. Harlan, but he wasn't sure if it was safe. Instead, he just shrugged. It was okay, he said softly. That night, as Amir lay in bed, he could hear the men arguing in the other room. He closed his eyes tight and started to pray. Please, God, he whispered. Please help us. And please, let Mr. Harlan be able to do something. As Amir drifted off to sleep, he didn't know that across town things were already happening. Mr. Harlan's friend Jake, an FBI agent, was hard at work. Jake and his team were digging into every piece of information they could find about the men in Amir's house. They worked through the night piecing together clues and evidence. With each discovery, the picture became clearer. These weren't just some troublemakers. They were dangerous criminals involved in a string of robberies across the area. Jake felt a sense of urgency growing. He knew they needed to act fast to keep Amir and Oliver safe, but they also needed to be careful. One wrong move could put the boys in even more danger. As the sun began to rise, Jake and his team finalized their plan for the operation. They would move in the next day, ready to put an end to the criminals' activities and bring safety back to Amir and Oliver's home. The next day across town, Mr. Harlan sat in his study, his face creased with worry. He had just gotten off the phone with Jake, his FBI friend. The news wasn't good. The men in Amir's house, Jake had said, they're connected to a big robbery that happened last week. It's worse than we thought, Harlan. Mr. Harlan's heart sank. He thought about Amir's bright eyes and kind heart. He thought about Oliver, trying to protect his little brother. They were in real danger, and they didn't even know it. We need to move fast, Mr. Harlan said to himself. He picked up the phone again, his fingers shaking a little as he dialed Jake's number. Jake, he said when his friend answered. We need to get those boys out of there. Now. Amir woke up early that morning, his heart filled with a mix of worry and hope. As he got ready for school, he could hear the heavy snoring of the bad men who had taken over their house. He tiptoed past their room, careful not to make a sound. In the kitchen, Amir found Oliver already up making breakfast. His big brother looked tired with dark circles under his eyes. Amir wanted to tell him about Mr. Harlan, but he was scared it might only make things worse. Morning, Oliver, Amir said softly. Oliver turned and gave him a weak smile. Hey, buddy, ready for school? Amir nodded, his backpack already slung over his shoulder. As they ate their cereal in silence, Amir couldn't help but feel that something was different about this morning. There was a strange tension in the air, like the calm before a storm. 
Suddenly, there was a loud knock at the door. Amir's spoon clattered into his bowl, and he looked at Oliver with wide, frightened eyes. The knocking came again, more insistent this time. FBI, open up! A strong voice called from outside. Amir's heart began to race. FBI? Could it be that Mr. Harlan had really sent help? He watched as Oliver, pale-faced and shaking, slowly made his way to the door. When Oliver opened it, Amir saw a group of serious-looking men and women in dark suits. And there, standing behind them, was Mr. Harlan himself. The old man's eyes found Amir's, and he gave a reassuring nod. It's okay, boys, Mr. Harlan said gently. You're safe now. Amir felt a wave of relief wash over him. His prayers had been answered. As the FBI agents entered the house, their voices firm but kind, Amir knew that everything was about to change. The nightmare was finally coming to an end. Amir's heart pounded in his chest as he watched the FBI agents enter their home. He stood frozen in place, his eyes darting between the serious-faced men and women in dark suits and Mr. Harlan's reassuring presence. Oliver, pale and shaking, had stepped back from the door, his eyes wide with fear and confusion. One of the agents, a tall woman with kind eyes, knelt down to Amir's level. Hi there, she said softly. You must be Amir. My name is Agent Thompson. We're here to help you and your brother. Amir nodded, unable to find his voice. He felt a mix of relief and fear swirling in his stomach. Was this really happening? Were they finally going to be safe? Mr. Harlan stepped forward, placing a gentle hand on Amir's shoulder. It's all right, son, he said. Remember what I told you yesterday? Help was coming. Amir looked up at Mr. Harlan, feeling a surge of gratitude. He had kept his promise. The boy's eyes welled up with tears, but he blinked them back, trying to be brave. Agent Thompson stood up and addressed both Amir and Oliver. We're here to arrest the dangerous men who have been living in your home, she explained calmly. They've been involved in criminal activities, and it's not safe for you to be around them. Oliver's voice trembled as he spoke. I... I didn't know what to do, he said, his shoulders slumping with guilt. I was so scared. It's not your fault, another agent reassured him. You're both very brave for enduring the situation. As the agent spoke, Amir heard shuffling and angry voices coming from the back of the house. His body tensed, fear gripping him once more. But the FBI agents moved swiftly, their movements practiced and confident. Stay here with Mr. Harlan. Agent Thompson instructed Amir and Oliver. We'll take care of everything. Amir watched as the agents disappeared into the hallway, their voices firm as they called out commands. He heard the sound of doors being opened, followed by shouts and the clinking of handcuffs. Amir's heart raced as he watched the FBI agents disappear down the hallway. The house, once filled with fear and uncertainty, now buzzed with a different kind of energy. He could hear muffled shouts and the sound of heavy footsteps. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the house. Amir flinched, instinctively moving closer to Mr. Harlan. Oliver, his face pale with worry, reached out and grabbed Amir's hand. It's okay, Mr. Harlan whispered, his voice steady and reassuring. The agents know what they're doing. More shouting followed, and then the sound of running feet. Amir's eyes widened as he saw one of the criminals dash into the living room his face twisted with panic. But before the man could take another step, two FBI agents tackled him to the ground. Amir watched in amazement as the agents swiftly handcuffed the man, reciting his rights in clear, firm voices. It was like something out of a movie, but this was real. This was happening in his home. One by one, the criminals were led out of the house in handcuffs. Amir couldn't believe his eyes. These men, who had terrorized him and Oliver for so long, now looked small and defeated. As the last criminal was escorted out, Agent Thompson approached Amir and Oliver. It's over, she said softly. You're safe now. Amir felt a wave of relief wash over him. He looked up at Oliver, whose eyes were brimming with tears. For the first time in months, Amir saw his brother's shoulders relax. They're really gone? Oliver asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Agent Thompson nodded. Yes, they're gone, and they won't be coming back. Amir couldn't hold back his tears any longer. 
He buried his face in Mr. Harlan's side, letting out all the fear and worry he'd been holding inside. Mr. Harlan patted his back gently, murmuring words of comfort. As Amir's sobs subsided, he looked around the room. The house already felt different, lighter somehow. The nightmare that had haunted their lives for so long had finally come to an end. Amir watched in awe as the last of the criminals was led away in handcuffs. His heart felt lighter than it had in months. The house, once filled with tension and fear, now seemed to breathe a sigh of relief along with him. He turned to look at Oliver, expecting to see the same joy on his brother's face. But what he saw instead made his heart ache. Oliver's eyes were fixed on the floor, his shoulders slumped as if carrying an invisible weight. Oliver? Amir said softly, reaching out to touch his brother's arm. It's over. We're safe now. Oliver lifted his gaze, and Amir saw the conflict swirling in his eyes. Relief was there, yes, but it was overshadowed by something darker. Guilt. I... I let them in, Amir, Oliver whispered, his voice cracking. This is all my fault. I put you in danger. Amir felt a lump form in his throat. He had never blamed Oliver for what happened, but he could see how deeply his brother was hurting. It's not your fault, Amir said firmly. They tricked you. You didn't know. Oliver shook his head, tears welling up in his eyes. I should have known better. I should have protected you. Amir nodded in agreement, but he could see that Oliver was still struggling. The relief of being free from the criminal's presence was there, but it was tangled up with the guilt that had been gnawing at him for so long. I prayed every night, Amir said, his voice barely above a whisper. I prayed for us to be safe, for the bad men to go away. And look, Oliver, God answered my prayers. He sent Mr. Harlan and the FBI to help us. Oliver looked at Amir, a glimmer of hope breaking through his guilt. You really believe that? Amir nodded, feeling a warmth spread through his chest. I do, and I believe he'll help us get through this too. Together. Amir watched as Oliver's face crumpled, tears spilling down his cheeks. His big brother, who had always seemed so strong, now looked small and broken. Oliver's shoulders shook as he sobbed, his words coming out in a rush. I'm so sorry, Amir, Oliver choked out. I'm so, so sorry. I didn't know what to do when they first came. I was scared. Amir felt his own eyes filling with tears. He had never seen Oliver like this before. It hurt to see his brother in so much pain. They, they said they just needed a place to stay for a few days, Oliver continued, his voice trembling. But then they wouldn't leave. And I was afraid, Amir. I was afraid they'd hurt you if I tried to make them go. Amir's heart ached for his brother. He reached out and took Oliver's hand, squeezing it tightly. I wanted to protect you, Oliver said, looking into Amir's eyes. But I didn't know how. Every day I was terrified they'd do something to you. I felt so helpless. Mr. Harlan stood nearby, his face filled with compassion as he watched the brothers. Amir could see the older man wanted to help, but was giving them space. I should have been braver, Oliver whispered. I should have found a way to get help sooner. Can you ever forgive me, Amir? Amir felt a surge of love for his brother. Despite everything they'd been through, he knew Oliver had always tried his best to keep him safe. There's nothing to forgive, Amir said softly. You were scared too. We both were. But we're safe now, and that's what matters. Oliver pulled Amir into a tight hug, his body shaking with sobs. Amir hugged him back just as fiercely, feeling the weight of the past months lifting from both their shoulders. Amir stared at his brother, his heart aching. He had never seen Oliver like this before, so broken, so vulnerable. It was as if all the fear and guilt Oliver had been carrying for months had finally burst out like a dam breaking. Oliver, Amir said softly, his voice barely above a whisper. It's okay. I forgive you. Oliver looked up, his eyes red and puffy from crying. How can you forgive me so easily? He asked, his voice cracking. I let those men into our home. I put you in danger. Amir shook his head, feeling a lump form in his throat. He said, I understand that now. We were both scared. Oliver wiped his eyes with the back of his hand. But I'm your big brother, he said. 
I should have found a way to get help sooner. Amir could see the guilt eating away at Oliver. It hurt to see his brother in so much pain. He reached out and put a hand on Oliver's shoulder, trying to comfort him. You did protect me, Amir insisted. You made sure I was safe every day. You kept me away from those men as much as you could. Oliver shook his head, not believing Amir's words. But it wasn't enough, he said, his voice filled with self-loathing. I should have done more. I failed you, Amir. I failed as your brother. Amir felt tears welling up in his own eyes. He hated seeing Oliver beat himself up like this. He wished he could make his brother understand that he didn't blame him. You didn't fail me, Amir said firmly. We're here now. We're safe. That's what matters. But Amir could see that his words weren't getting through. Oliver's guilt was too deep, too raw. His brother's shoulders slumped, and he looked away, unable to meet Amir's eyes. Amir watched as Mr. Harlan approached them, his kind eyes filled with concern. The older man knelt down beside the two brothers, his presence bringing a sense of calm to the chaotic emotions swirling around them. Young man, he said gently to Oliver, what's done is done. What matters now is that you and your brother are safe. Those men can't hurt you anymore. Amir felt a wave of relief wash over him at Mr. Harlan's words. He looked at Oliver, hoping his brother would find comfort in them too. Mr. Harlan placed a hand on Oliver's shoulder. Son, I know you're feeling guilty, but you don't need to be afraid anymore. What happened wasn't your fault. Oliver lifted his head, his eyes red and puffy. But I... No buts, Mr. Harlan interrupted softly. Fear can make us do things we regret. But it's over now. You both showed incredible strength getting through this. Amir nodded, feeling a lump in his throat. He reached out and squeezed Oliver's hand, trying to show his support. Mr. Harlan turned to Amir, a warm smile on his face. Amir, do you remember what you told me about praying every night? Amir nodded, his eyes wide. Yes, sir. I asked God to keep us safe and make those bad men leave. Well, Mr. Harlan said, his eyes twinkling, it looks like your prayers have been answered. You're both safe now, and those men are gone for good. Amir felt a surge of hope in his chest. He looked at Oliver, seeing a glimmer of relief in his brother's eyes, too. Your faith and your love for each other got you through this, Mr. Harlan continued. And now you don't have to face your fears alone anymore. I'm here to help, and so are many others. Amir felt tears of relief and gratitude spill down his cheeks. He saw Oliver nod slowly, as if finally allowing himself to believe that the nightmare was truly over. Amir watched as Mr. Harlan gently guided him and Oliver back into their home. The house felt different now, like a weight had been lifted from it. Mr. Harlan's calm presence seemed to fill the empty spaces left by the criminals. Come on, boys, Mr. Harlan said softly. Let's sit down and take a breather. Amir and Oliver followed him to the living room couch. Amir noticed how Oliver's hands were still shaking. He wanted to comfort his big brother, but didn't know how. Mr. Harlan sat between them, his strong arms around their shoulders. It's okay to feel scared or overwhelmed, he said. What you've been through isn't easy, but you're safe now. Amir felt himself relax a little at those words. He looked around the room, seeing the mess left behind by the criminals. It made his heart sink. As if reading his mind, Mr. Harlan spoke up. Don't you worry about this mess. I've called some friends to help clean up and fix things around here. True to his word, within an hour, kind-faced people arrived with cleaning supplies and tools. Amir watched in amazement as they got to work, making the house feel like home again. Mr. Harlan stayed close to the boys, talking to them in a soothing voice. He told them funny stories from his FBI days, making Amir giggle despite everything. Even Oliver cracked a small smile. As the afternoon wore on, Amir felt his fear slowly melt away. The house was starting to look better, and the smell of fresh paint filled the air. Mr. Harlan made sure they ate something, ordering their favorite pizza for dinner. I'm not leaving until I know you boys are settled and safe, Mr. Harlan assured them as evening approached. Amir felt a wave of gratitude wash over him. 
He looked at Oliver and saw his brother nod in agreement. For the first time in a long while, Amir felt truly safe in his own home. With Mr. Harlan there, watching over them like a guardian angel, Amir knew that everything would be okay. As the days went by, Amir noticed a change in their lives. Mr. Harlan wasn't just a kind stranger anymore. He had become a constant presence, a rock they could lean on. Every morning, Mr. Harlan would show up with breakfast. Amir's eyes would light up at the sight of warm pancakes and fresh orange juice. Oliver, who used to be so withdrawn, now smiled when Mr. Harlan walked through the door. How are my boys doing today? Mr. Harlan would ask, his voice warm and caring. Amir loved how he said, my boys. It made him feel safe and wanted. Mr. Harlan helped them with more than just food. He taught Oliver how to fix things around the house. Amir watched in awe as his brother learned to change a light bulb and unclog the sink. Mr. Harlan was patient, showing Oliver step by step. You're doing great, son, Mr. Harlan would say, patting Oliver on the back. Amir saw how those words made Oliver stand a little taller, his eyes shining with pride. For Amir, Mr. Harlan became a listening ear. When Amir felt scared about what had happened, Mr. Harlan was there. He'd sit with Amir on the porch swing, letting the boy talk about his fears. It's okay to be scared, Amir, Mr. Harlan would say. But remember, you're stronger than you know. Those words made Amir feel brave. One evening, as they sat around the dinner table, Amir realized something. The way Mr. Harlan cut up his chicken, the way he asked about their day, the way he made sure they ate their vegetables, it all reminded Amir of how a dad should be. Amir looked at Oliver and saw the same realization in his brother's eyes. Mr. Harlan had become more than just a helper. He was guiding them, caring for them, loving them like a father would. As Mr. Harlan told another one of his funny FBI stories making them all laugh, Amir felt a warmth in his heart. He knew that even though they had gone through something scary, they had gained something precious, a father figure who was there for them no matter what. Amir watched with wonder as Mr. Harlan became a constant presence in their lives. Every day, the kind man would show up with groceries, tools, or sometimes just a warm smile. Amir noticed how Oliver's shoulders relaxed more and more each time Mr. Harlan walked through their door. One sunny afternoon, Mr. Harlan arrived with a surprise. Boys, he called out, his eyes twinkling, how about we spruce up this backyard of yours? Amir's heart leaped with excitement. He had always dreamed of having a nice place to play, but with everything that had happened, it seemed impossible. Now, here was Mr. Harlan, ready to make it real. They spent the whole day working together. Mr. Harlan taught Oliver how to mow the lawn properly, while Amir helped plant colorful flowers along the fence. Amir couldn't help but smile as he watched Mr. Harlan patiently guide Oliver's hands, showing him how to hold the gardening tools just right. You're doing great, son. Mr. Harlan said, patting Oliver on the back. Amir saw his brother's face light up at the praise, standing a little taller. As the days passed, Mr. Harlan's visits became longer. He'd stay for dinner, telling funny stories about his FBI days that made Amir and Oliver laugh until their sides hurt. Sometimes he'd help them with their homework, explaining things in a way that made even the toughest math problems seem easy. Amir noticed how Mr. Harlan always made sure they had everything they needed. New school supplies appeared on their desks, and their fridge was always full of good food. But more than that, Mr. Harlan gave them something Amir had been missing for so long, a feeling of safety and care. One evening, as they sat around the dinner table, Amir looked at Mr. Harlan cutting up his chicken, asking about their day, and making sure they ate their vegetables. It hit him then. This was how a dad should be. Amir glanced at Oliver and saw the same realization in his brother's eyes. Mr. Harlan had become more than just a helper. He was becoming their guardian, their father figure. One morning, Amir watched as Mr. Harlan gently guided Oliver through the front door of the therapist's office. It was their first session and Amir could feel the nervous energy radiating from his brother. He reached out and gave Oliver's hand a quick squeeze. It's okay, Oliver, Amir whispered. We're in this together. Mr. Harlan smiled down at them both, his eyes crinkling at the corners. That's right, boys. 
and I'll be right here waiting when you're done. As they sat in the waiting room, Amir's mind wandered to the past few weeks. With the criminals gone, their house felt like home again. But the fear still lingered, like a shadow in the corners of their minds. That's why Mr. Harlan had suggested therapy. Amir remembered how scared he'd been at first. The idea of talking to a stranger about his feelings made his stomach churn. But Mr. Harlan had explained it so simply. Sometimes, boys, our hearts need healing just like our bodies do. And these doctors? They're experts at helping hearts feel better. The therapist, a kind-faced woman named Dr. Sarah, called them in. Amir looked back at Mr. Harlan, who gave him an encouraging nod. You've got this, Amir, he said softly. In the cozy office, Amir and Oliver sat side by side on a plush couch. Dr. Sarah spoke in a gentle voice, asking them about their favorite things and making them feel at ease. Slowly, carefully, she guided them to talk about what had happened. Amir felt his chest tighten as he remembered the fear, the constant worry. But as he spoke, it was like a weight was lifting off his shoulders. He glanced at Oliver and saw tears in his brother's eyes. It's okay to cry, Dr. Sarah said softly. You've been so brave, both of you. When the session ended, they found Mr. Harlan waiting, just as he'd promised. He pulled them both into a warm hug. I'm so proud of you two, he said, his voice thick with emotion. On the drive home, Mr. Harlan asked if they wanted to stop for ice cream. Amir felt a smile spread across his face, the first real smile in what felt like forever. As they sat in the ice cream parlor, laughing over their Sundays, Amir realized something important. With Mr. Harlan's help and the therapy sessions, they weren't just surviving anymore. They were starting to live again, to feel safe and happy. Amir sat at the kitchen table, his eyes wide with wonder as Mr. Harlan spread out a collection of colorful brochures. The glossy pages showed pictures of smiling students and grand buildings, schools that Amir had only dreamed about. Boys, Mr. Harlan said, his voice warm and serious. I want to talk to you about your future. Amir glanced at Oliver, who looked both nervous and excited. Mr. Harlan had been taking care of them for weeks now, but this felt different, more official. I've spoken to the authorities and asking for a petition for me to be your guardian. I hope that's okay with both of you. That means I'll be responsible for your care and education from now on. Amir felt a rush of emotions, relief, gratitude, and a tiny bit of sadness for the parents who had left them behind. But mostly, he felt hope. Mr. Harlan turned to Amir, his eyes twinkling. Amir, your teachers tell me you have a real talent for math and science. Have you ever thought about becoming an engineer or a doctor? Amir's heart raced. He'd always loved solving problems and figuring out how things worked, but he'd never dared to dream so big before. I, I think I'd like that, Amir said softly, a smile spreading across his face. Mr. Harlan nodded approvingly. Well, these schools, he gestured to the brochures, have excellent programs that could help you reach those goals. And don't worry about the cost. I'll make sure you both get the best education possible. Oliver spoke up, his voice hesitant. What about me? I'm not as smart as Amir. Mr. Harlan reached out and squeezed Oliver's shoulder. Everyone has their own talents, Oliver. We'll find the right path for you, too. Maybe a trade school or a program that fits your interests. The important thing is that you both have the chance to follow your dreams. Amir felt a warmth spread through his chest. For the first time in a long while, he could see a bright future ahead. With Mr. Harlan's guidance and support, he knew that he and Oliver could achieve anything they set their minds to. Amir's backpack felt lighter as he walked into school, even though it was filled with the same books and notebooks as always. The difference was in his heart. With Mr. Harlan's support, Amir felt a newfound sense of security and hope that made everything seem brighter. As he sat down in his math class, Amir pulled out his homework with pride. He had spent extra time on it the night before, working through challenging problems with Mr. Harlan's patient guidance. When his teacher, Mrs. Thompson, called on him to solve an equation on the board, Amir stood up without hesitation. Great job, Amir. Mrs. Wilson beamed as he finished the problem correctly. You've really been excelling lately. 
Amir couldn't help but smile. He thought about how Mr. Harlan had encouraged him to ask questions and never give up, even when things got tough. It was paying off. During lunch, Amir sat with his friends, chatting excitedly about their upcoming science fair. I think I'm going to do a project on renewable energy, Amir announced. Mr. Harlan helped me research some ideas last weekend. His friends nodded, impressed. They had noticed the positive change in Amir over the past few weeks. He seemed more confident, more engaged in their conversations about the future. After school, Amir hurried to the library. He had joined the robotics club, something he never would have considered before. As he worked on programming a small robot to follow a specific path, Amir felt a thrill of excitement. This was the kind of challenge he loved, and now he had the support to pursue it. Walking home, Amir's mind raced with ideas for his homework, his science fair project, and the robotics competition. He couldn't wait to share everything with Mr. Harlan. For the first time in a long while, Amir felt like the sky was the limit. With Mr. Harlan believing in him, Amir was starting to believe in himself too. The next morning, Amir watched with pride as Oliver adjusted his tie in the mirror. His older brother looked different now, more confident, more alive. The dark circles under his eyes had faded, replaced by a hopeful gleam. You look great, Oliver, Amir said, grinning at his brother's reflection. Oliver turned and ruffled Amir's hair. Thanks, little bro. I couldn't have done this without you and Mr. Harlan. Amir's heart swelled with joy. It had been a long journey, but Oliver was finally starting to believe in himself again. Mr. Harlan had been instrumental in this transformation, helping Oliver find a job at a local tech company. As they walked into the kitchen, Mr. Harlan was there, sipping his morning coffee. He smiled warmly at Oliver. Ready for your first day? Oliver nodded, a mixture of excitement and nervousness on his face. I think so. I can't thank you enough for helping me get this opportunity, Mr. Harlan. Mr. Harlan waved off the thanks. You did the hard work, Oliver. I just pointed you in the right direction. Amir watched as Mr. Harlan gave Oliver some last-minute advice about making a good first impression. He could see the weight lifting off Oliver's shoulders with each encouraging word. The guilt that had once consumed his brother was melting away, replaced by determination and hope. As Oliver headed out the door, Amir couldn't help but feel a sense of wonder at how much their lives had changed. Mr. Harlan had given them more than just a roof over their heads. He'd given them the tools to build a better future. Later that evening, when Oliver returned home, his face was lit up with excitement. He regaled Amir and Mr. Harlan with stories about his first day, the people he'd met, and the projects he'd be working on. Amir listened intently, his heart full of happiness for his brother. Oliver was no longer the scared, guilt-ridden young man he had been just a few months ago. He was becoming the strong, confident big brother Amir had always looked up to. The following Sunday morning, Amir woke up with a sense of excitement. He and Oliver had invited Mr. Harlan to join them at church, and to their delight, he had agreed. As Amir got dressed in his Sunday best, he couldn't help but feel a flutter of nervousness in his stomach. He wanted everything to be perfect for Mr. Harlan's first time at their church. When they arrived, Amir watched Mr. Harlan's face carefully. The older man seemed a bit unsure at first, his eyes darting around the bustling church lobby. But as they found their seats, Amir noticed Mr. Harlan starting to relax. Throughout the service, Amir kept sneaking glances at Mr. Harlan. He saw how the man's eyes widened during the worship songs, how he leaned forward slightly during the sermon, hanging on every word. It made Amir's heart swell with happiness to see Mr. Harlan so engaged. As the congregation settled into their seats, Amir's heart swelled with gratitude. He clasped his hands together, bowing his head in silent prayer. The events of the past few weeks rushed through his mind. The fear, the uncertainty, and then the miraculous arrival of Mr. Harlan in their lives. Amir's lips moved silently as he thanked God for answering his desperate prayers. The pastor's voice rose above the quiet murmurs, calling the congregation to attention. Amir looked up, his eyes bright with unshed tears of joy. He felt Oliver shift beside him and Mr. Harlan's reassuring presence on his other side. Today, the pastor began, his voice warm and inviting, we have a special blessing to offer. 
He gestured towards Amir, Oliver, and Mr. Harlan. These three have a story of faith, courage, and the power of prayer. Amir felt his cheeks grow warm as all eyes turned to them. He glanced at Oliver, who looked a bit uncomfortable with the attention, but managed a small smile. Mr. Harlan sat up straighter, his face a mixture of pride and humility. The pastor continued, Amir and Oliver have faced great challenges, but their faith never wavered. And through their unwavering belief, God brought Mr. Harlan into their lives. Amir nodded, remembering the day he found Mr. Harlan's wallet. It seemed so long ago now, yet it was the moment that changed everything. Let us pray for these three, the pastor said, extending his hands towards them. For Amir and Oliver, who have shown remarkable strength and faith in the face of adversity. And for Mr. Harlan, whose kindness and generosity have brought safety and love into their lives. As the pastor spoke, Amir felt a warmth spread through his chest. He looked at Mr. Harlan, who met his gaze with misty eyes. Oliver reached over and squeezed Amir's hand. May God continue to bless this newfound family, the pastor concluded, and may their bond grow stronger with each passing day. The congregation echoed a heartfelt, Amen, and Amir felt as if his heart might burst with happiness. He had prayed for so long for things to get better, and now, sitting here with Oliver and Mr. Harlan, he knew without a doubt that his prayers had been answered. After the service, as they mingled with the congregation, Amir beamed with pride as he introduced Mr. Harlan to his friends and their families. This is Mr. Harlan, he'd say, his voice full of warmth. He's been taking care of us. Amir noticed how Mr. Harlan's eyes softened each time he said this, and how the man's hand would gently rest on Amir's shoulder. It felt right, like they were truly a family. As they walked out of the church, Amir saw Mr. Harlan pause for a moment, his gaze distant. When Amir asked if everything was okay, Mr. Harlan smiled, his eyes glistening with unshed tears. Everything's more than okay, Amir, Mr. Harlan said softly. I was just thinking about how far we've all come. You boys have given me something I didn't even know I was missing. Amir felt a lump form in his throat. He understood exactly what Mr. Harlan meant. They had all found something precious in each other, a family, bound not by blood, but by love and faith. Amir couldn't help but smile as he watched Mr. Harlan and Oliver work together in the garden. The sun was warm on his face, and the air was filled with the sweet scent of blooming flowers. It had been a few weeks since that special day at church, and their lives had settled into a comfortable rhythm. Every evening they gathered around the dinner table, sharing stories about their day. Amir loved these moments the most. Mr. Harlan would ask about their schoolwork, his eyes twinkling with pride when Amir talked about his latest science project, or when Oliver mentioned a new skill he'd learned at work. On weekends, they'd go on little adventures. Sometimes it was a trip to the museum, where Mr. Harlan would share fascinating stories about history. Other times, they'd pack a picnic and head to the park, spending hours playing catch or just lying on the grass, watching clouds drift by. Amir noticed how Mr. Harlan's eyes would soften when he looked at them, full of warmth and affection. It was the same look he remembered seeing in his parents' eyes long ago. It made him feel safe, loved, and cherished. One evening, as they sat on the porch watching the sunset, Mr. Harlan cleared his throat. Boys, he said, his voice filled with emotion. I want you to know how much you mean to me. These past weeks, well, you've brought so much joy into my life. Amir felt his heart swell with happiness. He looked at Oliver, who was nodding, a rare smile on his face. You've given us so much, Mr. Harlan, Amir said softly. You're like, like a father to us. Mr. Harlan's eyes glistened with unshed tears. He reached out, pulling both boys into a warm embrace. And you're like sons to me, he whispered. I couldn't be prouder of you both. As they sat there, wrapped in Mr. Harlan's arms, Amir felt a deep sense of peace wash over him. He knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, they would face them together as a family. Amir watched with pride as Oliver stood tall, his eyes shining with newfound confidence. 
The change in his older brother was remarkable, and Amir couldn't help but feel a surge of happiness. Mr. Harlan, Oliver began, his voice steady. I've been thinking a lot about my future lately. Mr. Harlan leaned forward, his attention fully on Oliver. Go on, son, he encouraged gently. Oliver took a deep breath. I've always dreamed of becoming an architect, but I never thought it was possible. Amir's eyes widened. He had no idea Oliver had such dreams. His heart swelled with pride for his brother's bravery in sharing this. Mr. Harlan's face lit up with a warm smile. That's wonderful, Oliver. Architecture is a noble profession. I think you'd be excellent at it. Oliver's shoulders relaxed as if a weight had been lifted. Really? You think so? Absolutely, Mr. Harlan affirmed. You've got a keen eye for detail and a creative mind. Those are valuable traits for an architect. Amir noticed Oliver's eyes getting misty. It was clear how much Mr. Harlan's support meant to him. But, Oliver hesitated, I'm not sure how I'll manage it. The tuition, the time. Mr. Harlan reached out and placed a reassuring hand on Oliver's shoulder. Don't you worry about that, son. I'm here to help you every step of the way. We'll figure out the finances together, and I'll support you however I can. Amir felt a lump in his throat. The kindness and generosity Mr. Harlan showed never ceased to amaze him. Oliver's voice cracked with emotion. Mr. Harlan, I don't know what to say. Thank you doesn't seem enough. Your success and happiness are all the thanks I need, Mr. Harlan replied warmly. Now... Let's start planning. We'll look into schools, scholarships, and everything else you'll need. As Amir watched Mr. Harlan and Oliver dive into discussion about Oliver's future, he felt an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Their lives had changed so much, and now, with Mr. Harlan's support, the future looked brighter than ever. Amir sat on the porch swing, gently rocking back and forth as he watched the sun dip below the horizon. The warm evening breeze rustled through the trees, carrying with it the sweet scent of blooming flowers. He closed his eyes, savoring the peace that now filled his heart. Oliver joined him, settling onto the swing with a contented sigh. For a moment, they sat in comfortable silence, both lost in their own thoughts. Can you believe how much has changed? Amir finally asked, his voice soft with wonder. Oliver shook his head, a smile playing on his lips. It's like a dream sometimes. I keep thinking I'll wake up and we'll be back in that old house, surrounded by those criminals. Amir nodded, understanding exactly what his brother meant. But we're not. We're here, and we're safe. All because you returned that wallet, Oliver mused, bumping Amir's shoulder affectionately. Amir felt a warmth spread through his chest at the memory. I was just doing what was right. I never imagined it would lead to all of this. They both turned their gaze to the house where they could see Mr. Harlan moving about in the kitchen, preparing dinner for them all. He's become more than just a friend, hasn't he? Amir said quietly. Oliver nodded, his eyes misting over slightly. He's family now. I never thought we'd have that again after mom and dad left. Amir felt his own eyes well up with tears. He believes in us, Oliver. He's given us a home, support, and love. It's like... Like having a father again, Oliver finished, his voice thick with emotion. They sat in silence for a moment, both overwhelmed by the realization of how far they had come. From a house filled with fear and uncertainty to a home brimming with love and hope. We've changed too, Amir said thoughtfully. You're not scared anymore, and I feel like I can dream big now. Oliver smiled, ruffling Amir's hair. You always dreamed big, little brother. Now we just have someone to help those dreams come true. As if on cue, Mr. Harlan's voice called out from inside, inviting them to dinner. Amir and Oliver exchanged a look, both seeing the gratitude and joy reflected in each other's eyes. Amir's heart swelled with joy as he walked into the familiar church, flanked by Oliver and Mr. Harlan. The sunlight streamed through the stained glass windows, casting a warm, colorful glow over the congregation. 
As they made their way to their usual pew, Amir couldn't help but marvel at how different everything felt now. Just a few months ago, he had sat in this very church praying desperately for a miracle to save him and Oliver from the dangerous situation in their home. Now, here he was, walking alongside the answer to those prayers. As they settled into their seats, Amir glanced at Oliver. His brother's face was relaxed, a stark contrast to the worried frown that had once seemed permanently etched there. Oliver caught his eye and gave him a reassuring smile, one that spoke volumes about how far they had come. Mr. Harlan sat on Amir's other side, his presence solid and comforting. Amir remembered the first time Mr. Harlan had joined them at church. He had seemed a bit out of place then, unsure of the rituals and customs. Now he fit right in, greeting fellow churchgoers with a warm smile and a firm handshake. The pastor began the service, his voice carrying through the church with a message of hope and love. Amir listened intently, feeling each word resonate deep within his soul. He thought about how his faith had carried him through the darkest times, how it had led him to return Mr. Harlan's wallet that fateful day. As the congregation joined in singing a hymn, Amir's voice rose with theirs. He sang with all his heart, filled with gratitude for the blessings in his life. He looked at Oliver and Mr. Harlan, both singing alongside him, and felt an overwhelming sense of belonging. They were more than just three individuals brought together by circumstance. They were a family bound by love, faith, and the justice that had set them free. Amir realized that this was what he had been praying for all along, not just safety, but a true sense of home and family. If you enjoyed the story of Mr. Harlan, Amir, and Oliver, I handpicked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.